doing an assignment uh, for the Saturday Evening Post, and uh, with Sammy Davis Jr. And one of the days that we were working together, he went over to the set at Ocean's Eleven. He was in the film. I watched them doing all their hokey, hokey stuff. Uh, they, they go crazy. They've got a lot of, like a fraternity group. Sammy Davis, of course, is a very, uh, very, very fast draw. It's probably one of the fastest in the country. And uh, he used to do that with everybody, and of course, he'd blow them all out. So I, I watched them get set up with uh, Louis Milestone, who was the director, to shoot uh, the, the, the uh, particular photograph that they were uh, seen that they were shooting around the, the uh, pool table. So I asked uh, when they were through if I could uh, have a couple minutes just to make a still. So uh, I arranged the people around the table to my liking. I uh, had my camera there, a little hassle band on a tripod. Set, got into the camera, focused, made sure it was okay, made two exposures, and they said, okay, that's it, it's a wrap. So we were through with that, and that was in 1960. If you want to make a transition from there to now, uh, I have galleries in New York and Los Angeles and a few other places that sell some of my photographs. And one of my galleries in New York is Soho Triad. And uh, they called me and said, uh, uh, Barry, Barry called and said, Julia Roberts was just by, saw your Ocean's Eleven, loved it, bought one. And she bought another one and sent it to Soderbergh, who's directing the new Ocean's Eleven. And then a week later, I got a call from this gallery, Apex Gallery on La Brea. And uh, he says, uh, I, we just had one of the people from the new Ocean's Eleven in here, and they bought another print, and they're going to give it to, to uh, one of the other cast members. And I said, that's kind of nice. I think, I think it was uh, George you know, Clooney. So uh, I get a call a week or two later from Warner Brothers, and they said, would you be interested in reshooting the new cast like you did the 1960 shot? And I said, no, I said, I haven't. I've been doing film and directing, and I, have, I don't even have a still camera. I don't think I'd like to do that. Uh, and my son was, listening to this and he said put it on hold I put it on hold and he said tell him yes he says there'll be no problem I'll be the production manager we can get three of the top photographers in the country to be your assistant because most of them work for you so I got back on the phone and I said we're going to do it and uh, we show up get everything all set in, in the meantime I had asked for a pool table and they said we, don't, we can't get a pool table here to Palm Springs you'll have to do without it so we made mar we marks on the floor. I measured a real pool table, so we knew where to put the people. We put them all there, and then we waited for the cast to come. And eventually, they got there. And by this time, uh, they they had been looking at. The, I brought with me the, the original photograph, but in a gigantic size, and I put it behind the camera. So. All the guys were so nice to me. Every one of them came over and said, what an honor it is for us to have you shoot the, the new Ocean's Eleven. And, and uh, that was the way the two of them came together. And uh, that's, this is the result of it. Having been in film myself a little bit, been around sets a lot, I noticed a, a tremendous difference between the first shoot and the lack of control that Louis Milestone had over this group. The Rat Pack ran that shoot. But they ran it with, with fun. I mean, it was just a hell of a good time. It, it, it was, that's what they were doing, was having a party. When I got on to Steve Soderbergh's set, it was very, very warm, very friendly, but it felt like it was a, a family. That ever, these guys had worked before with him. They knew Steve. Well, the reason that there is the, the difference uh, between the, in the body language is that we had the real pool table uh, at Ocean's Eleven on the set. 
and people were leaning, they had a, 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 the, able, the ability to lean into the picture. Here, they're all wonderful actors, but they had no ability to lean against anything, to give me any body language, so to speak, simply because there wasn't, there wasn't the physical prop to work off of. This was a, a, a piece that we took out of my original photograph. Uh, we, my son is very good at run with uh, Photoshop. So he pulled it out of there and stuck it into this shot. <laughs> and uh, I, I heard when, when we were getting ready to shoot, uh, he asked for uh, the prop man. The prop man came over and he says, I need a, I need a, a roll aids. Give me a roll aids, will you? So I figured that that was going to be his shtick, you know, his little prop for the shot. So he's, he's got it here. You can read it if you're, if, when, you, when you see the, the shot in large. Now tell me about it. Cheadle's was a little more difficult. Tell me why. He just couldn't get himself ready to shoot. We got all of these people standing around waiting for me to get my shot. But he was kind of busy with his scarf and his jacket and fixing himself up. Compare George Clooney to Frank Sinatra. Uh, and just in terms of um, their leadership on the set. I, Clooney is a much cooler uh, command, uh, but very well respected. Sinatra was the leader of the Rat Pack, and anything that he did or anything that he said was okay. And everybody went to him, you know, for, for whatever they needed and he took care of, of, the, of the Rat Pack. When he wasn't happy with the take, or he loved the take, that was it, one take. And he'd walk off the set. And the, the, the composer, the, the, the conductor, all the musicians, he knew. He knew more about tempo, he knew more about rhythm, he knew more about phrasing than anybody in the business. And if you'll talk to any of the guys that, that directed his sessions, they'll tell you that they learned more from Sinatra than they did from anybody else in the business. Because he was he's a multifaceted talent. He was a great, he was a good actor, damn good actor. The, one of my most favorite singers. Uh, and just a hell of a fun guy. Did uh, Dean Martin make much of an impression on you? Yes, especially after the shoots, uh, when they were in Vegas. All the guys would go, most of them would take a steam bath or they would go out and gamble. And Dean Martin would say, I'm sorry guys, I'm going to bed. He'd go to bed, get up early in the morning, play golf. I mean, this was not what he was interested in. What's the biggest difference between this bunch and this bunch? This was my pleasure and a joy, and I was honored to be able to work with these people. Uh, because they're the, the new talent. And I don't forget, I haven't been shooting new talent for about 10 or 15 years. So this was a great ex experience for me. But uh, they seemed a lot more sedate. There wasn't the, the esprit uh, decor of a whole group. Uh, the, the original cast, when they weren't working, were all, the, the Rat Pack was together and they were fussing around. They were doing stuff. Uh, these, maybe a couple of them would get together and then but it would it dissipate and they'd go back to work and they'd do their thing because they respected Soderbergh and they wanted to get the damn shoot going and, and he was doing take after take after take. A perfectionist, an absolute perfectionist. Believe it or not, I was a fighter for two years and I know how hard it is to make a punch look like it's really a punch. And these guys had it down pat, and I think that was the thing that was most interesting to me in all of these, that they were so capable of doing something that a, a, a stuntman would, would have to do, and you'd have to train to do it. He just said something really nasty to Dean, and Dean, although he looks like he's laughing, he's not, he's really ticked off, so they're going to get into it. So Dean comes over, and Sinatra says, no, you guys can't do that. I don't want, no, no violence on the set here. Come on, get it out of here. He finally hits him. And I mean, he really hits him. And he knocks him down. He's right, there is his feet coming up into the shot. 
and that was the end of that take, and now they're just all standing there laughing because it, it, it did such a great job. <laughs>